Hi everyone. So if you're watching this video, you've clicked on the title, and um, yeah, this is a this is a cautionary tale. This is a tale of how you can end up wasting a lot of time, and especially for new ESL teachers in China or or anywhere. But let's just focus on China because that's where I am. Um, it can be a bit of a it can be a bit of a shock. So. Very recently, just to set out, lay out the scene, I was talking with a company about doing some summer camps in, well, I'm not, I'm not afraid to tell you which province, in Jiangsu province. Now, it looked pretty good. I haven't been to Jiangsu province. I've been through it, but I haven't ever been around there. And um, being there in summer, it, it, it seemed pretty cool, so I was pretty excited about it. And um, I had a couple of interviews, met this lady from the school, uh, I gave them my CV, I gave them my visa page so they knew I would be in China during that time, I could be in China during that time. And um, I had a couple of big conversations with this lady uh, and another lady from this, from this agency. And... Um, it just basically all came to nothing. And I saved myself the time because I basically saved myself. And, and this is this is where um, the, the cautionary tale is. They, they, they asked me to prepare. So we had these interviews and very friendly. They're smiling. I'm smiling. It was a very friendly, generous, kind sort of atmosphere in the interview. And then after the interview finishes, there's like a, a form that's sent talking about planning the summer camp and preparing lesson plans and, and so on. And I sort of just said to this agent, I said, like, I don't want to spend like so much time. Like, I don't want to spend hours and hours on, on these lesson plans. And then they just give them to another teacher. So can you please ask the school to either pay me a couple of hundred RMB? I think I said, uh, yeah, I said 200 because in reality, I, I could have done it in an hour if I worked really fast and um, or an hour and a half, maybe. And uh, this this lady's like, oh, they don't want another interview now. So there were going to be three interviews. So as soon as I asked for any sort of payment for doing work, they just didn't want to know me. And um, the agent then kind of said to me, like, we actually haven't worked with this school before and we think they just want lesson plans. Now, this isn't the first time this has happened to me and it might have happened to you. So if it's ever happened to you, let me know in the comments. I don't get a lot of comments. I get people commenting and just saying um, something about Chinese politics sometimes, you know, but I don't get a lot of a lot of comments about about these ESL videos. But if you have experienced this, let me know in the comments. I'm sure a lot of China ESL teachers have. And uh, anecdotally, without naming any names, I've known people who have applied for a position and they've been asked to prepare like a semester of lesson plans or even like a year of lesson plans before they started the job, before they signed the contract, before they actually started getting paid. And some of these guys have actually done it and then they haven't even got the job. So it's something that does happen. So the cautionary tale in this is don't work for free. Do not work for free. If they want you to fill out a form or talk about an idea, fine. You know, I think that's okay. What's wrong with that? Like they, I'm happy to talk to someone in an interview for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I mean, I, I spend... My hobby is kind of talking to myself, so I'm happy to do that. But when it comes to like doing work, like doing a lot of work, preparing an actual lesson plan, um, don't do it. Don't do it unless you're getting paid because you're always running the chance that you're going to put in that time and then you don't get the job. They give it to another teacher. They give it to... And, and this kind of technique is, is a common one, unfortunately, in ESL still today. Um... It was more common in the past, I think, but it's still around and it, it kind of does surprise you because I guess with the regulatory cleanup of ESL, 
it's easy to kind of think, well, the operators that are still around have got integrity or or the bad people have been washed out of the system. But but the uh, the bad operators are fairly tenacious. They're they're good at hanging on. That's how they that's how they survive. So yeah. A uh, quick update on me and my situation for anyone who's interested. I might have a couple of old friends or family members or loyal, dedicated followers who are interested. Um, the university is basically online, so I'm busy preparing lessons for that. Online, this is not the topic of this video, I'm adding it on, but with online classes, it's definitely best, pre best to prepare because those one or two minute monologues that you can give to use up time in a regular class where you sort of tell a story or something it just rings really hollow online and uh, again if you've experienced that leave it leave a comment below but but yeah there's a little bit of a of a uh, yeah it's it's just not the same so I I've been preparing a lot not too much like maybe three four hours a week of actual work and uh, just creating some cool PPTs and, and movie dialogues and, and choosing a theme and, and, and stuff and, and uh, running with it. And my lessons last week were about, uh, I guess, racism in the United States. So I looked at the movie Mississippi Burning and, and uh, typed out the dialogue. And, and if you saw my video about how to transcribe a dialogue, that's what I did. But I had to do a lot of work in addition to that. And then just made a PPT to sort of share in a very simple way what, what that whole, the context of that movie and give them lots of discussion questions and, and highlight some vocabulary and stuff. So preparing all of that material once, like, after, this is the other thing as well. I, I think a lot of people know this. I'm not like advocating for people to over prepare or, or something like that, but, but especially with online, I think you, you do have to prepare. And, um, yeah, now I've got that lesson and I'm, I'm excited about the next one. But preparing that class, it actually, I was really looking forward to teaching the class um, uh, once you prepare. And yeah, going to eslconversation.com, looking for some questions, adding a couple of my own. I mean, preparing for a class, uh, it is, it's not something I, I absolutely can't stand. Like, I do enjoy it, actually. So that that's, um, that's that's a part of a part of where I am at this point in time that I actually do enjoy it. But um but yeah, when you prepare you you look forward to your class and they go so quickly. They go so quickly. You sort of like actually don't have enough time, which is a good which is a good feeling to have. Whereas if you don't prepare, you sort of like oh, I hope this lasts 10 minutes. Oh, I hope this lasts long enough, um which is which is not not very much fun. And uh, the other thing I would like to say is that um, my online classes in uh, just teaching adults online and stuff, that's starting to grow a little bit. So I've now got three adult students that I teach online. So that's really cool. I mean, it's it's good to have the extra income, but I have, I have also got like, um, yeah, I've got a little bit attached to these guys. Like I look forward to having the classes with them. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... And that's, that's another, that could be a whole other episode. Like if you're working a lot, especially if you're working with adults, you don't, I mean, there's a couple of people I call on the phone and, and I have a coffee with someone a couple of times a month or, or whatever. I've got my wife with me, but when you're, when you're teaching adults, you sort of, you do, it, it, it's satiating that, that need for friendship in, 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 a, in a sense, like you don't feel like you need to hang out with people when you're, when you're teaching adults. Um, yeah, but that, that could be a whole other topic. Anyway, um, I hope everybody's well and I will see you in the next one.